Oh, you hear me, actually. Yeah. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Well, we'll be having a session, a brief panel session, actually, that will be occurring for one hour about uh, upgrading medical practice with Wikidata. So this is a part of the project, Wikimedia Research Fund funded the project. Uh, you can scan actually the report for that project on the right. And that project is a collaboration between Wiki Project Med, Data Engineering and Semantics Research Unit from Tunisia and the University of Virginia School of Data Science from the United States. Yeah. So that's the name of the project, <laughs> just for your information. And well, just to uh, to reveal how the panel session will be occurring, actually we will have uh, 20 minutes to present how, with the state of the art of medical wiki data, and then we will have the 35 minutes of discussion between the panelists regarding the state of the art of the usage of Wikidata in healthcare. Yeah. So now we will have a brief tour of, inter of introduction of the panelists. So we were supposed to have Daniel Mitchin, but uh, he was not, uh, not here due to some circumstances. But we have myself, Lane Raspberry, Thomas Shafi, James Hellman, and Mosa Bennett. Uh, so we will get everyone to have a brief introduction of himself. We'll start with James. Perfect. Uh, James Heilman. Uh, I'm the chair of Wiki Project Med Foundation, um, and I've been involved with uh, working on Wikipedia's medical content since 2007. I'll hand it over to Mozab. Uh, my name is Mosab. I'm uh, a medical doctor. I am also part of uh, Wikimedia Medicine. I'm a membership admin, and I have been contributing to Arabic Wikipedia since 2013, mostly in Arabic content, medical. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Thomas. Um, I've been contributing, um, I guess, since about 2014. Uh, I don't have a medical background. I'm a biochemist originally and subsequently a bioinformatician and data scientist. Um, but my interest is in, um, I guess, academic Wikipedic collaboration and ways to bring in uh, Wikimedia contributors uh, from those sorts of demographic demographics that, that don't normally contribute but could. My name is Lane Raspberry. Uh, I'm a Wikipedian at a university in the United States. I do medical information and content related to LGBT people and LGBT topics. Yeah, so I am Hussein in Turkey. I used to be a medical student. I am still a medical student at my home city in Sfax, Tunisia. I am also involved a, in Wikimedia research, particularly computer science research, and have been involved in creating our Wikimedia research structure at my university, Data Engineering and Semantics Research Unit. So I have served in several positions, including the Wikimania CUT of last year, uh, the board of Wikimedia Tunisia as well. So, all right, after this introduction, let's go straight to the point. Yeah, so as you have seen, we are all Wikimedians, but not only Wikipedians. So we should benefit from every single open resource within our movement. And this is not what many Wikimedians think. Well, why we should actually look at Wikidata? Well, it is a structured ontological database. Having statements in the, in the form of triples, it has a multilingual support, semantic alignment to external resources, plenty of tools for person at a rich in the database, and it is linked to Wikipedia. So we can play with it in a variety of shapes. So it is a rich network of medical knowledge and it can be easily extensible to cover new topics. For example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there, there was nothing by the early month of the disease, but just in four months, look at that. We have actually a whole taxonomy about, uh, about COVID-19 related topics. 
we have the, the three pillars of the graph, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, the disease COVID-19, and the virus, which is SARS-CoV-2. And we have all, all these three items, actually major items, are related to, the, to themselves, and actually they are related to a variety of, of medical classes and non-medical classes. We have genes, proteins, taxons, actually humans who contracted the disease, uh, kind of uh, symptoms, vaccinations, drugs, etc. And that just in a few months. Yeah. However, although this is a huge achievement, actually Wikidata, mainly when we talk about medical information, has several limitations. And that's why it did not go to the next stage of uh, using it in developing medical applications. The first limitation is that medical statements in Wikidata have limited uh, number of references. Some statements are not imprecise. For example, in this example, you have the sign of uh, appendicitis as abdominal pain. It did not show which part of the abdomen actually is the, 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 the place where the pain is. And actually it should be the right lower side of the, the abdomen or at the early stage it can be a, a gastric pain. So that lack of actually precision can actually uh, let people don't uh, let people uh, not take seriously the database. Also, we, we have seen that a lot of external resources are not fully important. And when we talk, for example, about OBU ontologies, the open biomedical ontologies, we find that 40% uh, of these ontologies are ma mass imported to Wikidata. Although they are open licensed and there is no legal constraints to actually uh, download, upload this information to Wikidata. Yeah, several types of information are still not supported. For example, uh, where, where diseases are located. For example, for the Ebola hemorrhagic fever, we have the map on Wikipedia, but actually this is not converted into statements in Wikidata. Also, several medical classes do not support actually uh, do not support actually uh, uh, validation uh, validation schemes. For example, we have no entity schema, no data model, and no entity schema for uh, many important medical classes in Wikidata. For example, we have no entity schema for surgical therapies. For example, and this will lead people to define the thing in a different. Um, a layout leading to some scattering, some inconsistency of the, the data. Also, some kind of relation types are misused. For example, Bechet disease has phenotype aviatus. Probably this is because there is, uh, there is no, the, 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 the relation type that should be used is not in Wikidata, so they are, they are doing some approximative work to actually get the closest relation type and use it instead. Yeah, so here are the problems. So we need a plan for action. So what we can do? Actually, we can raise awareness about Wikidata as an open medical resource, and you can enrich and validate medical knowledge in Wikidata. Finally, we can create tools to reuse medical knowledge in Wikidata. How to raise awareness about Wikidata? That's pretty simple. Actually, there are several works in this context. So first, we can make Wikidata useful for the Wikimedia community. For example, doing like, like supporting info boxes uh, for, med for medical articles in Wikipedia, uh, kind of uh, for travel guides, for Wiki Voyage project, if they are traveling to uh, epidemic countries, etc. 
but also we can share Wikidata with the scientific community and showing how Wikidata can be a flexible hub for the semantic web research and how they can be useful actually for scientists to develop their ideas, etc. Now let's show how to enrich and validate Wikidata in uh, a variety of paths. Yeah, so actually one of the main ideas that we propose to do is actually to make a framework of interaction between Wikidata, open biomedical ontologies, and PubMed mesh keywords. For those who do not know, mesh keywords or medical subject headings are controlled keywords that are existing in PubMed. So the association of mesh keywords in a single article can mean that the, the, two, the two words that are co-occurring are related. And so using this combination, we can actually generate uh, semantic relations just by leveraging PubMed. Uh, concerning open ontologies, many ontologies are aligned to, uh, to Wikidata. We have now 15 ontologies that, are, uh, operation, that have operational Wikidata properties. And so they can play on that, actually ameliorate the coverage of these ontologies and work more of that. As well, we can actually use PubMed to get references to unsupported Wikidata statements. Uh, we can verify several relations uh, in Wikidata by comparing them to external resources, etc. So all, all kinds uh, actually uh, of uh, uh, interaction between these three resources is possible. And we can play more and discover more things and actually uh, develop that, etc. Yeah, finally, concerning the creation of tools for reusing medical knowledge in Wikidata. Well, uh, this is mainly not done actually to take the place of the physicians. Many people actually understand biomedical informatics wrong. Actually, it, it, it is there to help physicians to do the dirty work, the dull work, the dangerous work, the dear work etc. So uh, what we mean here is that uh, physicians have, uh, have serious working conditions and they, they need to go through uh, night shifts, etc. Lots of inf information to handle at the same time. Uh, patient data are not uh, li like in the book, <laughs> as, <laughs> as we may say. So that thing actually cannot be handled by, by the doctor without any help. So he, she, he should have some resources, some tools to help him uh, around this mission. And even uh, artificial intelligence will not take over the physicians even in a hundred years because, because there, there is uh, even machine learning models will not, will not deal with rare diseases where data is not available. And so we, we, all, we will always need physicians and medical specialists. Yeah. So a few examples about how actually to use Wikidata in this context. Actually, we can use Wikidata, actually uh, mirrors of Wikidata to actually uh, annotate electronic health records and actually uh, may, for doing some medical reasoning about uh, the patient's state, status to do some prognosis or to, uh, to reveal drugs, etc. So that's the first application. The second application is that we can actually uh, give Wikidata kind of uh, uh, some, some information, anonymized information about patients, and Wikidata can, can provide us the answer about how to deal with the patient. For example, if we give the list of the drugs for a given patient, it can return us uh, the drug interactions, the symptoms, and you will have the, the medical diagnosis or the complications, etc. So this tool actually uh, is called medicine. It exists. We have developed it. And uh, if, you, uh, if you scan the QR code on the right, Actually, you will get into the URL. You can test it yourself. 
It is multilingual, and that's an advantage about uh, clinical decision support based on Wikidata, by contrast to the ones that are on the market and that are and proprietary and mainly uh, monolingual. And if you click, if you uh, actually scan the QR code uh, on the left, actually you will get all the source code. And it is open source and, they, and you can easily figure out how it works. Yeah. There is also the COVID-19 dashboards. I, I think most of you have learned of that. Actually, wh what we do is that uh, we enrich Wikidata with real-time uh, information about COVID-19. And actually, we, we, we have some predefined uh, Sparkle queries. And what the dashboard does is that it gets the information uh, as soon as you access the tool, the dashboard. At this, the, the, uh, at this actually information is updated in near real time. This means as Wikidata is updated with the new information. And by this fact, actually, you don't modify your tool, but uh, actually, as it gets uh, information all the time from Wikidata, you will have it there and will be updated automatically to give you the, the, all, all the, the consistent information and recent information that can be used by physicians or by uh, any person who is interested in medical topics. Yeah, so these are all the references that I have used for this research. Most of them are developed by us, the panelists. So you can see in bold uh, our names in some of the papers. Yeah. And now, actually, let's jump to, uh, to our panelists, actually, to discuss more about actually how to move forward with uh, the application and the use of Wikidata in medicine. The, so, the question number one, what are the good examples of Wikidata benefiting patient care or public health on a local or global level? Anyone to answer? Okay, Hussam. So, uh, during our session, we talked about medicine. If you remember the previous slides, medicine is a tool that use um, that is used to uh, to see the drug interaction. Most of us, like uh, even physicians, there are hundreds of drugs. Um, not every physician can remember or memorize by heart every single interaction. So, for for example, if you go to the if you go to the tool and you put like for example rifampicin. Uh, a drug uh, used to treat TB, tuberculosis. Uh, if you go, if you press uh, to find the interaction, you will find that it interacts with, uh, with paracetamol, for example. So this is one of the fields that uh, Wikidata can help physicians in finding out what's the drug interaction. Other thing that we work together with um, our friends and panelists and uh, also Hussam, uh, uh, we worked in the um, association between sign and symptoms and the, and the um, uh, uh, disease manifestations uh, using Wikidata data items so this is also other other example after after like making um, um, uh, signs and symptoms more specific like the, the example Hussam give about appendicitis and the uh, lower quadrant pain uh, this will uh, this will help uh, for sure it will not replace the uh, physician because uh, medicine is not one plus one equal to uh, to two it's more complicated relationship so uh, but uh, for sure uh, when when you when we um, like give the computer or give the database um, bunch of symptoms it, it will help us to find at least uh, uh, a smaller list of differential diagnosis that will help the physician to uh, to then uh, then figure out the, the the correct and exact diagnosis so this is two 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 points that i can make uh, to this question anybody can uh, think of something um, so this is not necessarily an example of what's being done exactly right now but it's an extension of what you were just talking about so the way that Wikidata handles drug-drug interactions is not fundamentally different from the way in which it can handle other interactions. So, for example, um, there are certain uh, drugs that interact poorly with the parasite of humans called pregnancy. But also, there are other um, conditions that can interact with drugs. For example, sleep deprivation can have effects on uh, some drugs or even uh, certain things like talking therapies or talking therapies interacting with other types of talking therapies. 
So the way in which Wikidata is modeling drug drug interactions is extensible to a wide range of other relevant interactions outside of just the narrow scope of, of pharmacology. Exactly, and for those who are not from a medical background, uh, I want to explain that why is uh, pregnancy is called a parasite in a medical point of view? Because you know uh, the, the fetus is dependent on the mother. He he takes the food and uh, uh, he uh, he 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 shares the blood with her. That's why, in a medical board, uh, point of view, we look at the baby as a parasite. <laughs> yeah, for sure, in the future. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Mozab. Um, so, you know, one, one of the other common uses of Wikidata within the Wikipedia world is the use of uh, Wikidata items within info boxes, and that allows a bunch of languages to collaborate on keeping certain topics up to date. Um, you know, one of the unfortunate limitations of that is that, you know, the, the English Wikipedia hasn't bought into the use of Wikidata at this point in time. And some of the concern around that is, you know, we don't quite have good mechanisms to feedback changes that occur within Wikidata to the Wikipedias themselves. Um, and, you know, they're still working on, uh, on efforts to allow um, uh, Wikidata to be used outside of the, the wikis run by the Wikimedia Foundation. So hopefully, you know, from what I understand, the Wikimedia Deutschland, which is running Wikidata, is working on both of those problems, and hopefully that will expand the potential of these info boxes to be powered by uh, Wikidata items. Question number two. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, the question number two. So what are the main pros and cons of Wikidata as a central medical knowledge hub? versus the traditional databases we discussed earlier. Big advantage of traditional databases is the authority behind them, the control, the high, high quality that you get of not letting anyone edit. Of course, the, the problems with these kinds of things, they, they come with traditional values like closeness, uh, inability to export and reuse to adapt to do translation or to move into other platforms, to remix in different ways if it's a tr traditional database. Sometimes it's not uh, positioned to remix and combine with other databases when that's necessary. When you have something like Wiki, uh, in, anything's fair game. You can combine these things, you can translate them, you can remix them, you can export them into other, other products. Disadvantage with Wiki, of course, is maintaining the quality control. But in every talk that you hear at this conference, people are gonna say something about quality. Quality is definitely a big concern for the Wiki community, and in, in my opinion, it gets much better every year. Um, I mean, another thing that a lot of people in this audience can talk to a lot better than I can is the interlingual aspects of it. Um, I'm a native English speaker, and as such, I only speak English, so I can't really talk about that. But I am interested in interdisciplinary research, and one of the limitations with a lot of existing databases, they're hyper-specialized. You go to a medical database, it's only got information about medical topics. You go to a, a biochemistry database, it's typically only got biochemical topics. You go to an evolutionary database, it's only got information about evolutionary topics. And it makes it hard to ask interesting interdisciplinary, in, interdisciplinary questions like um, which, uh, which genera of animals tend to produce peptides that tend to interact with receptors that are associated with uh, pain, which is an interesting research question from the point of view of which animals should I be testing to try and find new painkillers, right? That, that, that's the sort of question that is already actually still quite narrow in scope. There are far more interdisciplinary questions and uh, asking questions across multiple topics that Wikidata is, to the best of my knowledge, the only database that even comes close to being able to, to have these sorts of hyper-diverse questions asked of it. Yes, and also other point is that the accessibility. Uh, Wikidata for sure is a free and accessible database, but for other specialized databases, you need to pay like monthly um, uh, or yearly um, uh, pay a certain uh, amount of payment to, to get access to this. So this is another thing. Also, it, it makes our work on Wikipedia easy because if I edit on Wikipedia, for example, on Wikidata, a number, for example, a statistical number, or or I did like um, I added some symptoms, it will be reflected on more than 300 languages which also make it a broader ex uh, audience than than you know uh, da um, some sort of special databases yeah. Next question, yeah indeed 
Well, the next question is, what is Wikidata's role in enhancing situational awareness for emergency responders and medical teams? That's, yeah, that's a question. Okay, so I will read the question again. What is the Wikidata's role in enhancing situational awareness for emergency responders and medical teams? Okay, um, I will try to answer this question as best I as I can. Um, as far as uh, to my knowledge, uh, when we uh, deal with uh, sometimes with emergency situation, one of the things that we want to know sometimes when there is a poison, for example, what's the antidote, and when is the, where there is some uh, medication taken, what is uh, if there is a medical interaction, for example, like um, you know uh, sensitivity reaction, like anaphylactic shock, and these things. So, um, if I think this is an area that Wikidata can help if it is uh, developed in. In, in a more simple way uh, for like, um, you know, because um, for example, emergency and um, and the first aid uh, sometimes are provided by lay person, not, uh, not even a specialized person. So if, if, if our tools like become uh, uh, more simplified, uh, that would help people because um, when we are talking about coma or, uh, you know, um, uh, losing consciousness, there is sometimes um, medication as the cause. Sometimes there is like blood pressure as the cause. There's different the differentials. But if it is medication, for example, uh, we can use uh, Wikidata to find out what's the antidote, or uh, if it's a scorpion bite, Wikidata can tell us there is something called anti-scorpion. If it is like, uh, for example, uh, drug uh, toxicity, it, it can tell us what to do. Is it is it like uh, activated charcoal? Is it like uh, lavage? Is it um, is it like a certain antidote? So I think this is an area that Wikidata can help. Hope answered the question. And also, I guess there's a, been a, an ongoing topic throughout the whole of this conference around the increasing role of AI. And I suspect that this is exactly the sort of situation that there's going to be an increasing reliance on AI in emergency situations, asking some AI assistance, uh, not necessarily for entirely what to do, but maybe for some of the details of what to do, particularly from, from non-specialists or people coming across a particularly complex situation from the first time. A classic problem of current AI models they hallucinate, they come up with false information, but they present it very confidently. Yeah. And there's a lot of interesting work going on around how do you anchor those large language AI models to reality? And this is a more complex topic than just Wikidata, but Wikidata I think is a part of that that allows you to anchor some level of reality into these sorts of um, models. I'll say something else that's relevant, relevant to this conference, relevant to interdisciplinary, multilinguality. So many things are happening so quickly, it's amazing. I'd like to call out, uh, disasters always happen, crisis always happens, it can happen for weather or epidemics or any other kind of disaster that you can imagine, we'll, we'll never be done with these. And you need all kinds of diverse data every time a disaster happens. There's people at this conference from a project called OpenStreetMap, they make free, free, free and open maps. And if you have a, a crisis somewhere, you need high quality open maps of the region. And this starts with interconnectedness with, with Wikipedia. So outside of our movement, but very much related, there's something called the humanitarian open street map team. And every time there's a crisis, people map out the region where the crisis is so that medical, medical responders can go in. And often this starts with something seemingly silly and unrelated in the wiki movement. Like what is the public art? What are the statues? are the, the artworks in the places when the crisis. But if a crisis happens, that artwork and those Wikipedia articles about the monuments, those become landmarks for other people to use to orient other things. In an open street map, in the same way that Wikipedia has collaborative editing, open street map will say, where, where are the grocery stores? Where are the buildings that we can house people in case of a big storm where people suddenly need housing? And this, this interconnects, open street map so, in so many ways, interconnects with Wikidata. So everything you've heard at this conference, this is just a fraction of it because we're working with so many other open data communities and this is getting very complex and developing very rapidly. And actually, just to, to add to that, I don't do a huge amount of work with OpenStreetMaps, but one of the things that is really impressive is also the speed at which it's updated. You come across disaster uh, scenarios, well, uh, the map that you were relying on a month ago may not be accurate anymore. You know, this bridge no longer works. These roads are no longer traversable. This uh, landslide has taken out a particular um, a particular road, a particularly important um, other piece of infrastructure. Uh, and the speed at which that information is updated is exactly like, you know, our wiki movement. It's highly relevant um, and highly timely. 
Yes, and for also for Wikidata, we are talking about Wikidata now. But what about the future? Uh, we we always uh, hear about uh, image processing. For example, in the medical field, radiology. There is a there is a, like a saying that nowadays says after maybe five ten years the the radiologist uh, will be replaced by you know AI because imaging processed by computer to a certain extent can help. Like for example, uh, um, uh, lay people to know what is what what is happening in this picture. Is it for example epidural hemorrhage? Is it uh, is it um, like you know perforated bowel? What 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 is the situation so it can give us information yeah next question yeah it's james oh, james, james <laughs> you know just one one extra addition on the open street maps topic one of the wonderful things about their their project is it functions so amazingly well in an offline environment um, and you know that that is key for a disaster is you know people need to you know because during a disaster, often people lose um, their telecommunications infrastructure. They lose their electricity um, uh, power infrastructure. So having offline functionality, which Wikipedia does, which OpenStreetMaps does, but which all the for-profit organizations out there simply don't. So we will head to, to the next question. Yeah. So the next question is, in what ways does the utility of Wikidata differ between common and rare diseases? Okay, so uh, for example, for the common diseases, um, uh, information are plenty. When you are talking about uh, a rare disease, the information are markedly uh, less than uh, common disease. Also, uh, the language difference is very big. So when are, we are searching about rare disease, in, 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 for example, in English, we will find uh, good information in comparison with like when we search about this, the same rare disease in Arabic. So I think um, uh, Wikidata role in, in, in the trans lingual uh, translations um, can help to bridge this gap because even uh, when you talk about signs and symptoms um, if, if we search in Arabic for a, for a rare disease uh, it's 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 sometimes the, the content is zero and that's what we are to, uh, trying to do in, in rich Arabic content on Wikipedia to to um, to make this data accessible to Wikidata and to make it in different languages that will help bridge the gap um, I mean, even though the question is phrased in terms of uh, common and rare diseases, I think there's also a similar issue that comes up with diseases of the rich and diseases of the poor. Um, the same sorts of biases exist in terms of the amount of content that is out there, how in-depth it's documented, how accessible it is, and you know the, the multilingual aspect as well. So it, it, these are kind of very linked topics. It's not just a question of the, the common versus rare um, aspect. There can be extremely common diseases or common conditions that are, uh, are treated very differently. One of the things that, that Wikidata still also doesn't do particularly well um, is uh, treatments outside of uh, pharmaco interventions, so, so drug interventions. When we're talking about other sorts of interventions, surgical interventions is an example that, that's come up, but also um, uh, various different types of talking therapy for psychological interventions, right? If you look at uh, a Wikidata item on um, a, a pharmacological intervention for uh, severe depression, those items are going to be far more in-depth than the equivalent items on a talking intervention. And in part, that's maybe because the, the structure of the information and the data on a talking intervention is, is maybe a bit more complex. It sometimes requires um, more subtlety, more nuance, um, uh, more qualification in the way that that information is put up. But it's also a, a reflection of the existing data that's out there and, and the current interests of the, the community. So I don't think it's a fundamental problem. It's something that's going to improve over time. <clears throat> I'm going to say this from a perspective of kindness. This is a, a non-medical perspective. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to tell you something about the, the wiki community. So if somebody shows up and they have a rare disease and they come to Wikipedia or Wikidata and they say, I'd like to get more information about it, they're going to be approached by Wiki community members who are not have no background in healthcare, who don't know anything about the disease, have never heard, don't really even care about the disease. But we have a community of people with library skills, and they want to help people answer any kind of questions. And I tell you, tell you the, truthfully, and I mean, mean this sincerely in all kindness, they will make a game of the rare disease. 
These Wikipedia editors are very proficient in library research and they will go out into the world and they will try to find every source of information that has ever been published on this rare disease. And when they do this, they will feel pleasure from this, they will think it's fun, they will think it's a game to find all available information. So if you're talking about a very common disease, it's less fun because there's tens of thousands of papers and tens of thousands of sources of information. But if you're talking about a rare disease, in our wiki community, people get a great amount of pleasure to find the 10 sources in the world that talk about this and then deliver those to the person. So that's something unusual that you will see in the wiki community. And you can't play these kinds of games if you have a closed database or a closed community. Yeah, so the last question, actually. How can healthcare providers be motivated to contribute to curating Wikidata and maintaining data quality? All right, well, I, I guess I, I've got a few things to say about that. Um, I mean, one of the things is, as many people have mentioned, visibility. Uh, Within Wikimedia, Wikipedia has huge visibility. There are very few people who you'll come across who haven't interacted with Wikipedia in some way. And even though the reputation of Wikipedia used to be extremely poor amongst academics, researchers, physicians, clinicians, I think that that reputation has been improving pretty rapidly. Um, and that's you know, due to concerted work of the community in terms of quality, referencing, timeliness, in-depth, thoroughness, et cetera, et cetera, all, all topics you know about. Um, in terms of Wikidata, it's not well known. I mean, people at, at this conference will typically know about Wikidata, uh, but I think it's pretty, uh, knowledge about it is pretty limited outside of um, our community. And so part of what can be done is, I guess, a boring answer of awareness raising, under, you know, reaching out to um, practitioner communities who could find contributing to or drawing from this sort of data useful and interesting but simply don't know about it yet. Um, the other aspect I think is working out systems of uh, reward for it. So people who know me know that I do a, a lot of work with a project called Wiki Journals. Um, now this is mostly focused on the uh, Wikipedia prose type content. It's a way to try and draw in more um, academic, expert, professional, etc., communities into contributing content that can be put into Wikimedia projects by effectively, effectively rewarding them with peer-reviewed, citable publications. Now that model currently works well for prose type content, but I don't think it's impossible for it to eventually also work for curating a subsection of Wikidata type content. So you can imagine a scenario in which uh, some expert on uh, a particular drug class is asked the question, hey, we'd love you to go through the subset of Wikidata to do with this drug class is the information up to date? Are the references the best references to use? Are there other interactions that you've come across that would be interesting? Are there other qualifiers that could be added that we're not including? Uh, you're an expert in this topic, but not an expert in Wikidata. So we can pair you up with someone who works in Wikidata and we can work with you to write up the improvements that you made, the observations that you made in a small mini paper, few, you know, few pages long, but the ability to then publish that, get it peer reviewed, get it uh, get a citable object uh, means that you can put that on your CV and justify the time that you spent. You know that then means you can justify that time to your institution, to your uh, promotions committee, to the next job you're applying for, for the next grant you're applying for. So those systems of reward can be really important for people who have extremely limited time, and unfortunately, the the uh, systems that are set up currently have very strict definitions of uh, reward for different types of activities. And if your activities don't fit within those particular categories, I'm sorry, there's no reward for doing that. So I think there's a, a, an extent to which we can make that interface between the Wikimedia world in general and Wikidata in particular compatible with the ways of working that some other expert communities of potential contributors um, work, but, but don't yet exist. And, you know, to add on that point, as, as a non-technical expert, Wikidata is difficult. 
Um, you know, I think in prose as a physician, I don't think in structured data. So, you know, my work on Wikidata always generally requires collaboration with someone who has the technical expertise to run scripts, to, you know, upload the, the data that, that I want uploaded to Wikidata, to, you know, when I propose new properties to make sure I've, you know, I've structured it correctly. So, you know, if we're wanting to pull in academia, we need to form these partnerships between those who have the technical expertise and those who have the conceptual, conceptual and, and subject matter expertise. And this is going to require pairs of people. Um, and, and I think that keeps a lot of academics away is, is you know, we within Wikidata, within the Wikimedia movement, you know, I know who to poke and who I can, whose arm I can twist to get me, you know, get what I want into Wikidata. But as a new person to the movement, it takes a lot of time to build those relationships and find people who are willing to help you on these technical projects. And, you know, having a place within Wikidata where people who are willing to volunteer and join experts in, in solving their issues, I think would be, um, would help our movement grow. Over to Lane. So these two have talked about um, telling organizations doing outreach about Wikidata. I'm going to have a different perspective on this. Don't tell organizations about Wikidata at all. Don't get them to engage. What we really need to do and where the better fight is, is just convincing people to have open content, period. Because if people will use open access licenses for their papers, apply open licenses to their data sets, they don't need to understand Wiki at all. There's plenty of Wiki people who will migrate their content into the Wiki platform. And universities and research institutes already understand this concept of openness. If you just tell them open source software, open access licenses, open copyright, uh, do not make something private unless there's a reason to be private. I'm not saying release personal information, but if something ought to be public anyway, then just give it an open license and the wiki people will take care of the rest. I'm going to do something that I did earlier and answer a different question that wasn't actually asked, which is kind of the, but I think it's the, the mirror image to this. So this is about, you know, um, contributing, curating, maintaining Wikidata. The, the other aspect is also getting um, it easier to pull information back out of Wikidata. And there have been some interesting early experiments, um, again, to be kind of a techno optimist in, in this with uh, around AI and the ability to uh, bypass the need to know Sparkle. Uh, the, the querying language in order to ask questions of Wikidata. So the, the example I, I mentioned earlier from this kind of multidisciplinary point of view about, you know, which which um, evolutionary groups of organisms produce peptides that might be, uh, that interact with receptors that are related to, to pain. Um, to be able to actually ask that question uh, of Wikidata is actually still quite complicated. You need to be able to, to write Sparkle code. And even though we do have tools to help out with that, it, it, it's still not trivial. There's a significant barrier to entry. And so, you know, you talked about pairing up um, people with subject domain knowledge and people with wiki knowledge. Uh, I think that they will increasingly be a third member of that marriage, which will be, the, you know, the m machine tools um, to be able to uh, facilitate that partnership so that we can, for example, ask that question just in plain language have the Sparkle query written behind the scenes by a, an AI. Um, maybe it has to be checked over by someone with, with more Wikidata knowledge, but at least it's a first approximation to be able, being able to ask that question without having to have quite such a level of technical knowledge. We have uh, five minutes. Anybody has any question? Please raise your hands. Yeah, I can, I, uh, while uh, some people take actually uh, uh, the time to reflect of questions, I can make a brief clarification about what Thomas said. Actually, the medicine tool that we showed earlier aims to bypass the Sparkle thing. Actually, you just need to choose using the Elasticsearch, using the, the search bar that uh, of a Schoolia tool, <laughs> the same search bar, we just uh, get it. <laughs> and you search for the items, the, the medical concepts, and you reason about that, you, you say you, you search for drug interaction, diagnosis, uh, association complications, and you click, and the tool does that for you. It writes the Sparkle query, and it generates the answer. And that's all, all what it does. Yeah, any question? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was very interesting to listen to how 
yeah how far we are going with Wikidata, and um, I think it's it. There's a lot you're talking about this from a medical perspective, but if we kind of try to expand this, it's really huge what can be done there. What I am uh, particularly interested about is uh, if you could tell me about your research journey. Like, you have research questions, you start with those questions, right? Then you probably say, I need to prepare the data to look if it's healthy, if it's enough, if it's probably I need to upload some data and some Qs and Ps uh, probably to define some if they are missing. Assume you are having that. You have also good references and you have probably common image which are linked to the items um how does it go after that like uh, are you your models or your research is focused on the text uh, or on the relationships of the data that you have or you are more and more using probably image classification or ai based tools to um, do kind of more of, uh, out of the data that is there so i i am not sure if the question is clear but I am um, interested to, to see how deep do you go on the data and uh, in particular the model selection you use to come out with your research because I did not see the research yet, but probably you could give a brief um, answer about that. Thank you. Yeah, I can, I can answer that actually. Well, you are right actually. Actually, when you are collecting data about a given disease, actually, you, you should formulate a research question. You say that I know I want to know the semantic relations related to that thing, to a disease, to a drug, etc. And so what we would do is that you formulate the query at uh, the bibliographic database, which is we PubMed in our situation. And so using kind of a Prisma method, but it is not <laughs> totally Prisma. You can, you can actually search for the, the articles with higher level of evidence that are not retracted, they are quite recent, etc. And then from that, after you do that pre-processing, actually you get the mesh keywords. And in that part, a second part actually uh, begins. In fact, the mesh keywords have, have qualifiers, and the qualifiers actually informs you about the aspect of, of the of the keyword that exists in the paper. For example, if you say uh, hepatitis C drug therapy, it means that the paper is about drug therapy of hepatitis C. So these qualifiers are predefined, so we know them. There are around 75 ones. And so using kind of uh, uh, matrix of correspondence between the, 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 qual the qualifiers of couples, actually you can train machine learning model to recognize the relation type based on Wikidata. So that, that's, it is as simple as that. Then you will have the, the human validation step to, uh, to actually uh, reveal if this is correct or not. Yeah? Just very little extension to that. Uh, do you use uh, classical um, AI or you are focusing more on the uh, deep learning uh, models? Yeah. I, because uh, if I think about the amount of data, probably it could be huge. Um, uh, not that huge. Actually, the relations between, uh, between mesh keywords in Wikidata are, are around 100,000. That's not that huge, actually. So. Uh, and we are using, concerning the models, we are using actually uh, three models. One is SVM, support vector machine. One is the CNN, convolutional neural networks. And one is the dense model. So uh, quite uh, state of the art models. Okay, we still have last minute. Any last question? Nasima. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very informative for someone f coming from a non-medical background. I just have a very simple question. The tools are excellent. We can see their, uh, their use and their uh, added value to the field. But uh, how can you avoid having, l like, avoid any tiny risk of having vandalism on Wikidata? Because the information is very sensitive. So if one thing is changed or misleading, maybe it can go that or some very uh, harmful consequences. Thank you. 
The, the best answer that I can give you is that there's 20 years of criticism of Wikipedia and how vandalism works. There's hundreds of papers written about this. Everyone in every country in the world has come up with this, like every three months for the past 20 years. So you, you read that, and then you get a feel for the quality in Wikipedia. And I, at this very conference, there's multiple talks of people developing artificial intelligence bots that are serve, doing mass surveillance on every aspect of Wikipedia to try to detect vandalism. I will not tell you that the quality of Wikipedia is good. I'm not going to argue that. I do think it's good, but I'm not going to not going to try to impress that on you. What I what I will tell you is that nobody in the world has identified an accessible source of information that is better than Wikipedia. I'm absolutely sure of that. I guess one small thing to add is also just the number of eyes on uh, on information is important because I actually think the the greater risk is missing information, right? If I'm standing here with you know an injection ready to give someone and I'm relying on some tool that tells me you know oh you know what are the contraindications when should I not give this injection and there's some information missing and I go fab time to give the injection like that's I would say a more common problem than someone going in to Wikidata and changing a piece of existing information. It's, it's, it's actually going to be the, the mistaken lack of information rather than a deliberate piece of vandalism. Yes, for example, for example for that is that it's a study in nature uh, comparing uh, the accuracy of Wikipedia comparing to um, to Encyclopedia Britannica. It found that Wikipedia is uh, one and a half more accurate than Encyclopedia Britannica, although Encyclopedia Britannica all know it's written by experts. So we still have a trust in Wikipedia. We have uh, we can argue academics in that, but it is it's a long journey. I think with time with time this problem will be solved. And you know. There does need to be more checks and balances with respect to Wikidata. Um, and, you know, m my hope is that those will continue to be de developed. You know, one of the key aspects is, you know, if, if a change occurs in Wikidata and that property is used in a Wikipedia, then, then that change should appear in someone's watch list um, so that then you have a greater number of human beings reviewing changes that occur to Wikidata. Um, currently, that doesn't work very well. I know that is on Wikidata's efforts, but they have a backlog of things they want to do. So it continues to be a work in progress. One other aspect is also something that is incredibly uh, baked into Wikipedia's culture and Wikidata is still catching up on references. Citations, citations, citations. There's still a disturbing number of Wikidata statements that are unreferenced. Um, and, and that's, I think, also a huge problem because that, that also raises the barrier to vandalism and make, can make vandalism easier to detect um, it, in the long run. Um, that if the inf it, it makes it easier to spot, hey, this statement either doesn't have a supporting reference or I can go to that reference and very quickly check to, to verify it. And so the, the way that Wikidata has so far evolved um, has led to a, a lack of references for some of this information. That's changing pretty quickly because there's been a concerted push in that direction. Um, but I think that that's still a, a current significant limitation. Thank you very much, actually. This is my contact. So if you, can, if you have any further questions and you need to reach out to me, these are my contacts. You can reach out. The phone is actually available on WhatsApp and Telegram. You can reach out to me. And there are also on the back, there are my business cards as well as the business cards of the head of research of our, my institution. So you can grab it and actually uh, contact me. Thank you.